I don't know how many of you know, but my dad uh, committed suicide on September 11th. And uh, so I began to think, I'm going to move this out of the way of preparing. Um, God showed me my dad's darkest hours. I believe he honestly showed me my dad's darkest hours. Because most of these men don't, don't even know um, the, the, the depth of this. Um, but this is, my, my dad raised me up all my life. He was pretty much the person that raised me up. That was my dad. So most of you know how you feel about your dad. So these darkest hours of my dad... He had to write a letter because he sent a letter in the mail to my mom. And uh, so he was preparing for his darkest hours. So I want to show you and give you a glimpse of what I believe my dad's darkest hours were. Because I began to weep in my office and fall on my face because we don't understand what God went through for us. We don't understand. And if we understand the depth of the darkest hours of Jesus Christ, we will turn to him if we're not turning to them. And we will live for him if we're not living for him. And we will abandon all. And we will leave that world behind. And we will go to him. My dad wrote a letter to my mom. Because he had to send it in the mail. Because he didn't want my mom to find him dead. He wanted the police officers that were going to be coming back and knocking on the door. He believed the next day to find him dead. So he had to prepare for this. So this is. In, in the Bible when it says his hour. It's not talking about physically 60 minutes. It's talking about a time frame. So my dad's darkest hour. He writes this letter. Six page letter, everything in it, telling us where all his stuff is hidden, where all the secret keys are to this safe, and this safe has a key to that safe, and do this and this, I owe this money, my inheritance is this, the IRA that the kids will get is this. He planned this out, lonely, because he can't tell anybody because someone will call the police and have him stopped. So he writes this letter, then the darkest hours, he sends this letter out, then he takes the truck, the pickup truck that I've now inherited, and he takes it. My dad has a driveway. We'll say the driveway is over there and he'd come up the driveway to here. He wants the police to find his body dead right away. So it's instant. So he backs the truck up. We'll pretend this is my dad's truck. So he backs the truck up. He's planning this all out. My dad's darkest hours. No best friend to be there. He lives out in the country. He has nobody at all to talk to. His last hours on this earth. And he pulls the tailgate down. And he goes and he finds a piece of plywood and he sets a piece of plywood in there and he gets his pistol and he takes his pistol with him and so that no one has to find his face, he crawls up in the bed and he puts a blanket over him. And with this nine rounds, his last darkest hour, because he wasn't walking after Jesus, believe in the light so you won't be in darkness. He knew the Lord, but he wasn't walking after the Lord. And he had been deceived. And the devil had come in and implanted junk in him. And I believe he was tormented by devils. And he got in that truck. Nobody to talk to his last hour. He throws a blanket over his head. Now it's all dark. And he knows that there's nobody to tell. He didn't tell anybody. Nobody knew. He didn't cry out to anybody in his last moment. He didn't talk to anybody. He had nobody to counsel out there in the middle of the country, in the middle of nowhere, with me, who loves him and is now serving the Lord in loving hands. Yet nobody to tell. Nobody. And he pulls the trigger, and boom! My dad's gone. Just like that, my dad's gone. Because he was walking in darkness. And I was fine, and I did his funeral. I did his service. And I held it together. And it wasn't until I think about that that it gets me a little... Because my dad's darkest hours were dark. He had nobody. He had been out there for years and you couldn't hardly ever talk to him. Praise God that God spoke to me in the middle of worship one day at, 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 at Loving Hands and told me to just text him and tell him how much I appreciate him and what he's done in my life even though we don't talk to him very often. And I sent him a text and he sent back, I'm so proud of you. Grandma would be so proud of his preacher voice. He'd be so proud. The year before that he had just started coming back to the Lord. I never knew he knew the Lord. He grew up in church and he started looking for God. Yet I held it together at the service. I was able to preach the gospel there to the people that only knew me as being a heathen as a kid. Yet, that's when I break a little when I think about it. Because I can't think how lonely that has to be. No matter how lonely we get, we have tomorrow. He doesn't have tomorrow to do that. There's nothing. Once you do it, it's done. You don't even get to sit around to see what the people look like when they read your letter. 
Or find your body. Then my mom has to go out there because the police don't show up and she's worried about him and hasn't heard from him and finds him. 